Hey guys, thank you for joining us another Tuesday for On the Journey with Carissa and Friends. I'm so glad that you're coming back to join us and I know that you've been blessed as much as I have by the incredible conversations and women that have been on the podcast. I'm so grateful to God for the opportunity just to share these stories, hear these stories and listen to the words of wisdom and application. Um, we never want you to walk away without resources and tools and, and just some insight into how to move forward for, from wherever you are, whatever situation or circumstance that you're in. We, we want to be there with you on the journey truly as much as possible. So I'm so grateful that you're back with us and, and we are going to continue to do just that today. I have my sweet friend Gretchen Leach with me. Hi Gretchen. Hello Carissa. How are you? I'm so good. I'm really excited for today. We've tried to do this a million times and we battled really illness I think has been the biggest. We had the flu. Did you guys have the flu or strep? Y'all got sick, didn't you? Your kiddos? Yes. Um, and our daughter had the flu. Yeah. Yeah. We both have had, like, my son had it and then your daughter had yes. it. I'm over the flu season. <laughs> Thankfully, it is starting to feel like spring. Yes. Um, it's warm today. Thank the Lord. It's really is food for my soul. I mean, the sunshine and it's amazing. Yes. So, Gretchen, you and I go way back, way back. Mm-hmm. Um, we met at UCA. So, Many you, months ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we both went to UCA and we joined a sorority together and we were pledge sisters in this particular sorority. And um I I always joke like I don't even want to go into any details about that. There's a it's really funny. There's a Taylor Swift meme that you send to your college friends and it says I'm telling my all my college friends that I would like to be excluded from that narrative. <laughs> And I really need to be excluded from that narrative. I'm grateful oh, for the no. redeeming blood of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. But it, what's so cool about all of that is that we pledged together. We went through a rush together. We you know, went to school together. And then I don't remember the last time we even saw each other. I moved away. I you know. moved it's away. Been... Probably since college that we really talked. Year, like what, yes. 15 years? How many years have we been out? A long time. Since 05 is when I graduated. So it's been a while. Um, okay, and so now just because of the grace and glory of God. God's perfect planning. Yes! Why don't you yes. tell everybody how we reconnected? Yes, well, um, Carissa, this was her children's first year at my son's school, yes. and um, so we ran into each other at open house. And it's so neat that that was really a gift for me, too, because it was so scary being the new people, right? and then walking in, and I, not, I saw not one, but two of my sorority sisters, mm-hmm. because our friend yes. is now a teacher. Yes, yes. at Chanel. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it's awesome. It's yes. awesome. And and it was a perfect planning. We started mm-hmm. talking about the Bible studies that we're both doing, and we just reconnected perfectly. I mean, how did that conversation even come up as quickly as we crossed paths? <laughs> I mean, we had like a three-minute conversation, and it just happened to come out in those three minutes yes. that you were yes. writing, had just written one or were writing one. I can't remember if you'd already written it. No, I had not started writing. I was I was inviting you to um, a Bible study that I was attending. That's right. And you hadn't done James yet. No. Right? Oh, my gosh. And it just, mm-hmm. I, you know, ministry has been my passion forever, for a long, long time, just by the grace of God. And so, um, anyway, and so then we got to reconnect and... Yes. Let's talk a little bit about, because the point of today's conversation, we really want to encourage you women in your calling. And Gretchen is going to talk a little bit more about what that has meant to her, what that word, you know, just that word means. But what I hope you will come to um, really find in your heart, really let settle in your heart when this conversation is done, is that all of us have one. And it takes different shapes, which you're going to talk more about um, Gretchen, but every, if you're within the realm of my voice, if you can hear my voice, you have a call on your life and we want you to be bold and be brave. Um, because 
as we were, you and I were just saying in our prayer time, we need women who are bold, who are willing to rise up and not let obstacles come in their path to respond to the call in their lives because we need help. Like we need women, we need encouragement, we need support, we need people to support and to encourage. We need you to respond to that call. Um, and God needs you to, for his sake, he commands yes, us to go absolutely. and make disciples, right? And our yes. purpose is to live for his glory here and you hiding because you feel inadequate or because you feel like you're not ready or because you feel like you're too much of a sinner or there's mm-hmm. so many things that Satan will tell us, mm-hmm. um, which I know you can relate to Gretchen that uh, absolutely yes, yes, to keep us not really living up to what we know God has put on our life. So just to start, why don't you tell us about kind of how you settled into this place, and then we'll talk more about your calling and what calling means to you. Okay, well, it was, um, I mean, I grew up in a Christian home, Christian parents that um, taught me how to fully love God and how to fear God in a a good, perfect sure. way. Yeah. And so I always have had a desire to do something for God, to step out and um, be different mm-hmm. for God. And, you know, it, it took a long time for me to get ready for that. And, you know, I've been married for 15 years now, mm-hmm. roughly, and as you know, you, you mature in your married life, start having kids and stuff. Then you start taking the time to say, "Okay, you know, God, what are you? What do you want from me? Mm-hmm. I want to do something for you. So what? What do you want for me to do for mm-hmm. you?" And I will start by saying, I am very much an introvert. Mm-hmm. I like to do things behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be out in the front. Um, you know, I would rather do stuff for the church that nobody knows I'm doing. So I start out trying to find that kind of um, work for me to mm-hmm. do. And I really, you know, started um, kind of showing some interest in these things. Mm-hmm. But nobody would call me to do these things. Um, they, you know, that that kind of uh, work was not coming to me to do. And I, I was sitting there thinking, God, you know, what, what is going on? Why, why this are you not giving me. this to me? I mean, this fits yes, my personality. Yes. Don't you want me to be comfortable with what you are like, asking me? Yeah, I'm like, this, <laughs> no, this nothing's, and the jobs that I did do in the church and around the, did not fulfill me mm-hmm. the way that things are supposed to. And I will say, you know, I don't want that to sound um, selfish or you wanting a fulfillment mm-hmm. in what you do. But I will say when you find your gift mm-hmm. that God gives yes. for you to do, he will fulfill you in a way that you can't even yes. imagine. You have to live it. You have to experience yes. it to understand it. But yes. it is a fulfillment. And you know. Yes. You know. You know. And right. it's a fulfillment that only he can give you. That's right. And um, so about this time that I was really feeling discouraged, mm. My husband was diagnosed with cancer, mm-hmm. and we had an eight-month-old and a four-year-old at the time. Mm. And so he battled his cancer for two years, and God knew, it's not your time, Gretchen. Wow. It's not your time. Wow. You need to focus on your family. Mm. That, that's your number one job right now is to take care of your family. Okay, so he did not remove the the, the feeling that you needed to be serving God, like he, that he had something planned for you. No. He didn't take that feeling away no. the entire time, and you were getting kind of frustrated that, okay, I feel like you're wanting me to, to use me, Lord. Mm-hmm. Why isn't anybody, in, like, why is this not opening up? But really... You still had that feeling. He just had to hold you back for a little while. Yes. I felt like you... the doors were shut. It's not your time. Yeah. This so is, that this you is could what do, you need to be doing. Focus on your family. Yeah. And um, I am very happy to say and very thankful to say that my husband is now in remission. Yes. Praise God. And so, you know, we started living this mm-hmm. life of normalcy if... If Whatever can, that means. Yes. <laughs> Whatever use that normal word means. very loosely <laughs> for those of you who have either been a caregiver of yeah. somebody going through cancer or um, battle cancer on your own. You know that 
there's really never a normal mm-hmm. life again. You are always anxious of and fearful of what might come. Right. But so it changes your view of the whole world. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally. But you know, we are in this season of our life where we have rest and remission mm. that we are so thankful for. And so, you know, um, about, let's see, it was a little bit, about a half a year after he was put in remission, um, my church kind of, um, asked me to give my testimony Mm -hmm. to a group of women. And I, you know, the, um, introvert that I am and not wanting to get up in public, I of course, did not want to, but I felt God pushing me to say, yes, okay. you need to do this. So let me pause here and ask mm-hmm. you, what was the feeling that you had after, even though you didn't want to do it, right? Was the feeling that you had when they asked you to serve similar to the feeling that you had before your husband, before you found out about the cancer diagnosis, where you felt like God was calling you to serve his kingdom, were, were those feelings similar or was this more like, I will serve you as long as it's what I feel comfortable doing, what I want to do, take me to those places versus when you were asked to speak, mm-hmm. was that more like a reluctant, okay, you're telling me to do this. I know you're telling me to do this. Did you feel the same as we use the phrase call in our discussion, did you feel the same I, call? I felt um, a much stronger call for this. Wow. To okay. speak. Um, okay. I sat down to write out my testimony, mm-hmm. and the words just flowed from me. And, um, I mean, it was such a an experience that I've never experienced before in my life, I would um, kind of take time out mm-hmm. every couple of days to sit and write for maybe an hour, mm-hmm. and I wrote it in a seven-day period. Wow. And the first time I read it to my husband, he just was crying because, I mean, it didn't we, feel like we did not know. We, yeah. we didn't know that I had it in me, and I, I don't. It was totally the Holy Spirit telling me every word to say. It's incredible. And so, um, you know, I gave this testimony and I finally felt that fulfillment. Mm. I finally felt God saying, this is where I want you to be. Yeah. You know, and I was sitting there saying, finally, God, you opened up that crack, oh. you know, for me to experience this and to start doing your work. And it, I heard him saying, Gretchen, finally, you are ready. It was a time, you know, when you go through a traumatic experience and you have that in your life, the only person or you can rely on is God. He is your complete lifeline. And that's what my family had to do for those two years Mm -hmm. is totally rely on God. And I'd never had to do that before. Wow. And so my husband and I, we learned so much through that and grew so much through that mm. that I think finally I, I got it. Yeah. You know, it it clicked with me. I understood what we're here for. Mm-hmm. And so I think God finally said, You're you're ready. You know what it is. I love that so much. And and what I love is, is what I've experienced as well. And I think that most people, when they do hit that spot, hit what, just that affirmation that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean the work is easy, right? It doesn't mean it's not a lot of effort and time and energy. It just means that you almost feel like you're you're in it with a partner who's doing most the workload, right? right? You still have to do your studying. You still have to do your prep. You still had to write it all down, but it's almost like you feel like there's a partner within you that is making the content Mm -hmm. come out. So it's still, it takes a lot of energy and effort in the action, but not in the content, Right? right, not in what's coming out of it, because it's the Holy Spirit doing it. Anytime you have a calling on your life or anything that you're doing for a kingdom purpose that God has specifically set you aside to do, you don't feel alone 
right. in the in the work. Mm-hmm. You still have to do the work, and the work is still hard sometimes. It's still challenging, and it's weighty because you deal you do feel the weight of kingdom work, but you never feel alone. You always feel like somebody is kind of. It's that stream yes. of living water yes. that Jesus talks about. That thing that bubbles out from you, that comes out of you in overflow if you give them the right space to do it in. Absolutely. Yes. You, you feel the Holy Spirit more than you can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. So you. after you gave your testimony, that was really the first season of you stepping into yes. that calling. And so what was it like after? Well, uh, a couple of weeks after mm-hmm. my church, they needed somebody to step up and um, commit to teaching a Sunday school class. And I mean, it was like, I can do that. <laughs> I, I want to do yeah. that. So um, I, I will say like the second I said, yes, <laughs> I would do that. God put on my heart. I want you to write oh. your Bible study. I don't want you to um, just teach from a book. I want you to teach from my word. I want you That's to That's a whole to... nother level, Gretchen. <laughs> That's a whole nother level. So I um started praying, okay, you want me to do this, what what book do you want me to teach on first? And he told me the book of James. Yeah. So I sat down and wrote an eight week Bible study mm-hmm. on the book of James. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let me just interrupt you for a mm-hmm. second. When you say he told me, mm-hmm. or you feel like, what does that, what does that mean to you? Like, what is that experience like for you? Because I know for it's different for yes. everyone when they get that affirmation, which is really what you're talking about. Just that guidance and affirmation. You know, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit prays on our behalf, and we don't know what to pray, and mm-hmm. then. He, in turn, leads us and guides us and convicts us and counsels us. That's his role, the Holy Spirit's yes. role. So what does that feel like for you? Well, I've had the same conversation with many mm-hmm. people. Yeah. It's and a big question. It I is. Be- um, I questioned, and, and I wanted to get into this anyways, mm-hmm. um, when I was writing James. And how do I know that, that it, this is God telling me what he wants me to do? Because how do I know that it's not just something that I desire? Right. Yes. And it's really the Holy Spirit telling me. And every time I questioned something like that, I would hear from multiple people the same answer. Yes. And they, the answer would be funny because they would say, if you hear something multiple times, yes. then you can guarantee God is wanting you to hear that. Absolutely. And uh, people would say, you know, this is what you need to hear. Mm-hmm. And and it would be exactly the question that I was having. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I would question, how do I know for sure that God is even calling me to do this? Mm-hmm. That's how what I, I think a lot of people ask. Yes. Yeah. How do I know that I'm, this isn't just something that I desire and it's something that I want mm-hmm. to do. I want to teach Bible study at my church. Right. How do I know that this is actually God calling me? Because about the time that I started teaching the James study, the devil attacked me Mm. very hard. Yeah. Very hard. Um, All kinds of fears, Mm -hmm. doubts, questions came up. Yeah. And I, you know, we sat down and had lunch and I talked about this very same thing that I started doubting that God was even calling me to do this. Right. And the fears and the doubts in my mind were saying, you're not qualified oh, yes. to do this. Yes. You're not smart enough to do this. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, he was, the devil was telling me, nobody is, wants to hear what you have to say. Yeah. Nobody is going to, um, enjoy you know you're not enthusiastic enough yeah you don't have yeah. your style isn't yes. good enough you don't yeah. have enough pizzazz that that people are going to want it got so far to where i was even questioning i'm not pretty enough oh yes uh, my voice is not good enough i don't have the verbiage that a teacher needs Mm. you know I haven't been to seminary I haven't done any of that Mm -hmm. so the devil was telling me you can't do this right and I will say our 
Lord, our Jesus Christ does not expect us to be perfect. Absolutely. The only thing he expects of us is to step out on that water with him. Yes. Having courage, being strong, yes. and most of all, having the faith that he is walking us through this. That's right. And that can go for anybody that is stepping out. You don't have to have a calling to mm-hmm. teach, preach, um, you know, be a worship leader, anything like that. You, all you have to do is... Have a family, have children. Be a wife. Yes. Just, just getting married yes. is stepping out on the water, right? <laughs> Being a wife, yeah. having children that, you know, you are supposed to be that godly wife yeah. and mother to yeah. and to teach them about Jesus Christ. Right. You have a friend mm-hmm. that you want to spread the word to. All we have to do, we don't have to be perfect. We don't have to have the perfect language and know the Bible inside and out to do that. Absolutely. All we have to do is have faith that we are God's messengers. That's right. And he is going to come from us. That's right. Absolutely. And one thing, two things I know to be true, um, pretty much across the board is that, well, three things. Number one, we have a really good father mm-hmm. and <laughs> he, I believe, builds in us the desire to do his will. I think that what happens is he's not going to call us to something we hate. Right. He's going to call us to something that maybe may probably will make us uncomfortable because I think we're all pretty much uncomfortable getting out there like that. Um, But what I'm seeing is that most of the time, he works with what we love for a reason. He crafts us. He makes us. And he gives us our passions. And he gives us the desires of our hearts. And he even allows us to be in circumstances that cultivate those desires and those passions. And he does it for a reason because he is sovereign and strategic in our lives. And so nine times out of ten, our calling is going to be something that we love. I think it's crazy so much we think that, God calls us to the terrible places where we're miserable and he, he, you know, it's just all about the suffering and we do experience suffering. Mm -hmm. Jesus is a, just a prime example of that. But I do also believe that he wants us to thrive in ministry because it's something that we're passionate about. That's a good indication that you need to go there and look for God. If there's an area that you're particular, like you're passionate about God's word. Yes. And I, I will say, I have always been. I love digging deep into his word and really fully understanding um, the concept of why things were written the way they were and and exactly what they mean. And so I've always loved that. So this shouldn't come as a shock to me. Sure. Maybe the getting up and teaching it part (laughs) is the surprising, the uncomfortable part. But you know, that's beautiful because I think what he does is he gives us our passion, Mm -hmm. right? And then he calls us to use it for his kingdom. And that's where sometimes the discomfort comes in. It's not necessarily in what we're what we're doing, it's how we're doing it. It's it's the, the, Mm -hmm. um, the media or the, the mechanism that's used to give that to the world right. that can be scary sometimes for sure. Yes, it can it can definitely be fearful, especially when you're first starting yes. out in that you're not gonna say the right thing. Right. You know, people are going to find out eventually that you're a fraud. Yeah. You know, wait till they you see don't how really, I really am. Right, yeah. right. Uh you know, I, I'm not a good enough person. Right to be teaching God's word or to be yeah. spreading his word. They're going to find my faults and and realize that they don't need to be learning from me. But that's God uses us. Mm-hmm. Nobody is perfect. He uses us to Absolutely. to spread his word. And and I will say I fought that battle. Mm. My James study was 8 weeks long and I fought that battle the entire 8 weeks. Wow. Wow. Yes. Well, and I'll tell you, that's another reason why. So you've got this passion. I believe God is there in that passion, gives it to you for a reason, 
because that's probably around where your calling is going to be. And then if you've got that passion and you really feel the stirring of the Holy Spirit and then you get attacked there Mm -hmm. by Satan, Mm -hmm. that's a number two guaranteed way to know that's what you're supposed to be doing. Satan does not want us doing God's work. (laughs) No, no. And, And for you... Your stronghold really was fear, and so he hammered right. you. He did. Hammered you with it. I've always struggled, you know, with anxiety and fear, and I'd gotten in a good place with it, and yes, he attacked me right that. where he knew he could get me. So how did you get past it? Like, what did you do, first of all, to persevere? Because you really did. Isn't that interesting that James is a lot about perseverance, I, and that's what you had know, to do. I love James. Um, and so how did you persevere through that? And come to the other side of the fear. Do you still battle it? How, what do you do when that sneaks back in? Or Well, I will say as soon as I realized that that fear and um, those questions were coming from the devil, mm-hmm. I uh, immediately said, I- I'm taking off the control. Mm. I-, I need... I need to be in control because I'm I'm like totally losing control over this, um, you know, calling that God right. has given me. Right. And so I took the reins back. Yeah. And you know, how many times do we do that? We we say, God, here, this is what yes. you want to do. I'm giving it to you. And then the second the wind starts to blow, <sighs> we gain control back. Yes. And that's what I did. And it took that entire eight weeks for me to realize that and then say, okay, I have to fully submit mm. to God. And if I don't, then this is not going to go the way God planned it. That's right. It will never go the way he planned it if I'm in control. That's right. So I ended up just fully giving everything mm. to him. What did that look like? Well... I was so when 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 God cracked the door open for me, mm-hmm. so many opportunities just flooded me. And that's number three. If you know you're doing God's <laughs> calling, is that mm-hmm. people will start to ask you to do things out of the blue. Yes, yes. So um, you know, I, things just started flooding me, and I started getting overwhelmed yeah. with all the opportunities. And when I fully submitted everything to God and said, okay, God, I'm fearful. I'm overwhelmed. I don't know what you want me to focus on. I have so many areas of my life from being, being a wife to being a mother to, um, you know, helping my church, helping my community, so many areas of my life that when I gave it to him, he gave me rest from some areas mm. that he did not feel like were supposed to be so important right then. Wow. And I feel that comes with anybody's life, whether you have a calling into ministry or not. When you fully submit it to him, when you are feeling overwhelmed, he will give you those times of rest mm. to focus on what you need to be focusing on. Yeah. And um, that's, I have found in different areas, Mm -hmm. in different times since the James study. Um, I've since written a Hebrew study and, you know, he gave me rest from other areas of my ministry to sit and write that study and to teach Mm -hmm. that study. And then new things, I already see new things coming up after uh, the Hebrews is over. And, um, you know, and then you have to always take time, like we've said, for being a wife and a mother. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, since my husband's cancer battle, we are very um, big into volunteering with the Mm -hmm. Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. And, I mean, he gives me breaks from my ministry to focus on that and to focus on just being the wife that I need to be for my husband and and being his best cheerleader and his... um, you know, support system. Yes. Just Absolutely. being there by his side and, yes. and helping him with his, his baby. Yeah. And, and you have to absolutely be sure 
to be in doing your due diligence of being in your word and in prayer. And I know that that's something yes. that you actively do before you start any study. Yes. Is so you... many people tell me that at the beginning mm. that don't, don't just make time to learn things to teach. That's right. You have to make your, um, relationship That's with right. Jesus Christ. That's what overflow is, right? Make overflow is when you're filling up first and it's flowing out mm-hmm. from you, not when you're working to teach and then taking yes. in. You've got to be doing it simultaneously so it just continually flows out. That's right. Well, kind of like in a family, how uh, the family dynamics without, you know, the the um, godly marriage and God being the center of your family yeah then your kids will not get what you need Mm -hmm. from yourself or from God. It's the same way if you don't have that relationship with Jesus Christ. That's right. If if he's not fulfilling you and by you reading the Bible and staying in his word Mm -hmm. and staying in a good prayer life, then you can't fulfill the um, call to go out and spread his word to others. That's right. No, we can't survive without it. No. We just can't. There's no there's no way around that. There's just no way around that. It's It's got to be personal relationship first. It's heart first, mm-hmm. and the rest emanates from the heart. Yes. So one thing I do want all of you to know is that if you want to hear more from Gretchen, she is going to be sharing her Hebrew study with us in the near future, and I'm excited to help share that. She's worked so hard and is already almost done teaching it at her home local church, yes. but she's going to share that with all of our sweet um, My Journey of Faith ministry um, people and friends. And so watch out for that. And let us just encourage you, if you have questions about how to step into your calling or what that looks like, you can email me at hardage 5 at hotmail.com, or you can email Gretchen. Yes. She would love to speak with you about it. Gretchen, why don't you yes. share where you can be found? And my email is dgleach. L E E C H mm-hmm. at sbcglobal.net. And I'm on Facebook. Just Are you on Gretchen all the social Leach. media? On all the Instagram, social media? Is. Instagram okay. is Gretch Leach. Okay. And we'll, we'll be sure and add in the comment section or in the um, info section her contact information because our hearts really are for women stepping yes, in yes. to the calling on their lives. So thank you. Thank you for sharing with us. Thank and you this is not the me. last you're going to hear from Gretchen. We're going to speak more on this in the future. And she's going to be back to talk about several other things, including her journey through surviving cancer with her husband and mm-hmm. what that experience was like. So she is definitely a friend that will be returning frequently. So thank you guys. And as always, always be sure to encourage one another daily as long as it's called today. See you next Tuesday.